call it a coincidence, call it something spiritual if you want, but for the last four or so weeks, I've had a real sense of urgency on me completing the testing and review of this outstanding survival blade, the Buck Hoodlum. Sometimes, just sometimes, if I really, really like a blade, I will generate an adventure just to test that knife. Such was the adventure that my buddy Crockett 20 and myself took last week just for the Buck Hoodlum. Yes, some other things came along for the testing process, what we could carry, um, but the primary purpose was to go out and test a hoodlum, really thump on it, and give you guys via the Nut and Fancy Tabletop Review some good data points and visual images of this knife in use, and perhaps myself learn something in the process. Come on, hoodlum. Yes, a sense of urgency. Dude. And if you were to ask Crockett 20, he'd say the same thing. Last week, I was like, I got to get this review done. I've got to get it done. I've got to get this testing done. And, you know, he was asking why as well. And it's because I wanted Ron Hood to have a chance to see the review um, before we lost him. That's why I had a sense of urgency. And I am very sad to report that I lost that battle of time. I ran out of time because last night, Ron Hood passed away and he is no longer with us. You might have noticed that in my booth review of Buck Knives at SHOT Show 2011 that Ron Hood and myself hit it off genuinely in the video. Kindred spirits perhaps, um, a sense of irreverence, yes, Ron and I both shared that and we saw eye to eye on a lot of survival philosophy, yes to include the large bladed survival knife. Yeah, instant connection. We converse several times via email, telephone. Uh, Ron, I want to miss you, buddy. Uh, I didn't know him that well, but I was privileged to have had uh, an opportunity to meet him and share just a little bit of who Ron is. High energy, funnier than heck, um, irreverent, absolutely, and very experienced, experienced uh, wilderness dude been talking about it in video form, in the forums, very active, lot in the knife community and in the survival, even bushcrafting community, know Ron Hood. And uh, Ron, buddy, this video is dedicated to you and it's dedicated to your family, Karen. And it's going to be unlike any other Net and Fancy Tabletop knife review you've ever seen because of that. Um, and although I didn't know Ron really well, I have a really good idea what he would say and that is, dude, Go on with the review. Give me the same review you always would. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Um, Ron has passed uh, from us, and that's very sad. And we're going to press on from that. And I'm going to transition into a full on, nothing fancy tabletop knife review from that very solemn introduction. And we're just going to get it done. Uh, it would be inappropriate for me, I felt, to start this review standard, though. Um, it just, I just couldn't do it. Um, so that's what I'm doing. So Ron, I know you're watching in other realms, and I think you're going to like what you're going to see. And this is the legacy of Ron Hood that we're looking at. The buck produced hoodlum. And I will tell you, it is an outstanding survival knife. And I really, really wanted Ron to hear that. Uh, and again, I'm bummed that I lost uh, the march of time. The buck hoodlum. With our friend Ron watching above, I will jump into the specifics here in just a second. Changing gears, but a little bit of house cleaning first off. Band-aid. People are going to ask what happened. Did you cut yourself with a hoodlum? No, I did not. It wasn't a knife at all, actually. Staple gun. Pneumatic variety. Doing some framing work. Shot through a piece of wood, thought I had it because of the angle, it hit a knot, angled out to side, went right into my thumb. About halfway into my thumb. No joke. You want to see? Why wouldn't you? Yep, there you go. A little bit swollen, hopefully not getting infected. Yes, I have a tetanus shot and I'm watching it. So don't worry. So that's a pneumatic nail gun that did that, and yes, it's distracting. On come the gloves. Probably a good idea anyhow, because I'm going to be handling some big steel on the Nut and Fancy reviewing table. 
enough of that. Jumping into it, here we go, philosophy of use. Ronnie, you'd be proud I did not hold back in testing your hoodlum. Leather gloves, by the way, in the background because that is a safety device when you test big blades. Nope, we thumped on this knife hardcore up in the mountains. You can probably tell that by looking at it. As such, philosophy of use as I see it is a large wilderness blade, just like a lot of the knives that I've reviewed here on the nut and fancy table over the last three years. Love them large survival knives. You may have picked that up, by the way, again in the booth review with Ron Hood and myself talking about large blades. And then also, if you didn't get it from previous reviews, check this out. In the upper right is my large survival blade philosophy of use video, why large blades rock, something like that. Check it out because it goes over most of the considerations as I see them currently subject to change on large survival knives when you talk about integrating it into a wilderness system, a man portable system, i.e. one where you're not using a motorized vehicle, you're not going out the back step, backside of your cabin and all that to do your blade use. You're carrying it. This is where the hoodlum guys really shines. I kid you not. Uh, I said this in the booth review view again uh, on initial impressions, jumping over to weight. This is the lightest weight 10 inch survival knife I've ever seen. Subject to change. We'll see what comes out in the future, but this thing is extremely light for this long blade. 15 ounces in the sheath, which we'll discuss in detail. 23 ounces? Wow. Nothing fancy, why are you so stoked about that? We know you love lightweight stuff. Ron knows I love lightweight stuff, and that's again another commonality that we had that when he designed the hoodlum, he didn't just go great guns and create a huge, heavy, big, whatever you want to call it, battle knife. Okay, uh, he didn't. He had an, an eye on the weight. To me, that's someone who's packed weight before. They know how limited you are in your man portable system. And the reason I'm so stoked about it on the hoodlum is because when you start looking at systems, and i.e. you're integrating the hoodlum into something in addition to the blade, it becomes very exciting. I'm gonna explain that in a second. Let me back up a little bit. A large wilderness blade, one reason, like I said in that philosophy video, that I love it so much is for making fires and making emergency, and I stress the word emergency because I do not do it every time I go out. I take a tent emergency wilderness shelters. It minimizes work, minimizes calorie expenditure, minimizes time in my experience, always subject to change. The hoodlum did all of that. Um, it is, however, not an awesome chopper in my experience. Sorry, Ron. It just isn't. It's too lightweight, okay? Um, when you get a 15 ounce knife, it's not gonna chop as well as, I don't know, we'll talk about this. Ontario RTAC 2 at 32 ounces. I mean, that's the total carry weight, but you know, it's the same thickness. I think uh, 3 16 of an inch thick distal taper, both of these are. This chops better because it's a heavier knife. We're talking physics, okay? There's And I, I called Ron on that in the booth review. I was like, you know, I don't know, I'm going to have to test it, see how well it chops. Just my data point is it chops good, not outstanding, however. It can't, it's only 15 ounces. There's no magical handle qualities, there's no magical resonance chambers. We can add to a knife that will overcome that in my estimation. There just isn't proven in my wilderness testing of the testing of the hoodlum. Okay? That is about the only downside I can see on that weight. Okay, is in I'm talking like when you chop a tree down about that thickness. Okay, when you're talking about delimbing, it did outstanding. Great job. Okay, through saplings, did great. But it's a high energy um, affair when you take the hoodlum against a rather large tree. That is what it is. I cannot change that. I'll lay it out there. That downside's been uh, addressed. The huge upside is this. The span that the 10 inch blade gives you across the log. The full flat grinding of the blade the classic Bowie, Bowie knife shape, clip blade, whatever you want to call it, classic, useful, 
functional in this POU, hugely functional. Good job, Ron, for going with it. You know, nothing eclectic, something that will stand the test of time. Yes, great legacy blade. And I will tell you, it was extremely impressive in our splitting test. That is batoning test. I mean, with 10 inches of blade, dude, you got all kinds of uh, blade tip exposed that you can really connect to to affect the split. Wedge shaped because it's full flat grind, ground. It did great. I, better than great, it did outstanding. I'm talking that Crockett 20 myself were blasting through, no joke, three foot, very dense aspen logs with the hoodlum. I'm not lying to you. You see it right there in video footage. We were just laughing. We're, we're just laughing. Let me tell you this. I'm always honest with you guys. It was that one type of wood. We're backpacking. We don't have energy. We don't have time to go scour the forest for a bunch of different types of wood, especially when we were faced with about 8 to 10 feet of snowpack. No joke. Uh-huh. We worked our butt off getting this knife tested. And it was a tremendous calorie and energy expenditure. So it was just that one wood, but it was very dense, and it really worked it well. Man, I love that 10-inch blade. Uh, what a wood splitter. I'm going to get to the back to the weight thing. I haven't forgot because it's interesting. I will say this, too. Ron was a big advocate saying that a large blade can do everything a small blade can do if you just use the right technique. I don't know if I totally agree with that. Uh, I think there are a lot of things that a small knife can do that a big knife cannot, at least not with the same amount of ease. But he did have some very interesting uh, philosophy and experience behind what he was saying. For instance, he quoted the Kandoshi, Kandoshi Indians, where they would hold the you know the large blade like their machete in their case under their arm upside down. They would do fine detail work. I haven't tried that with a hulam. I'm sure it would work if you got good at it just like a lot of things. Also for skinning, he said you could choke up, if I'm not mistaken, something like that, using your index finger to kind of use it as a glide with inside the animal as you're skinning, and you could get some good detail work done on that. I would wear gloves just like I'm doing now for safety. Okay, interesting. Um, you could carve with it, bushcraft with it. There's other users that have done just that, just that with uh, Ron's knives with great success um, and I think that it, all of the above you could do it and I have not tested all of that prior to this review back to the weight issue though I don't think you absolutely have to be confined to doing all those tasks with the hoodlum though because it is so light 23 ounce total carry weight with a sheath again we'll talk about the sheath here in a sec yes the video is going to go long as you can see with a tribute to Ron there's stuff to talk about Okay, and I'm not going to just bang out a 10 minute review on this knife. It's just not right. Check this out, 23 ounces. Then you add in perhaps, I don't know, how about a Leatherman S2 Juice, which will fit in that accessory pocket. Okay, yes, I have a point to all this. And how about the amazing, often talked about and thousands sold through the Nut and Fancy project, the Saw Viver. Who cares if it can't chop that great when I bring a Saw Viver? I'm talking systems. I always talk systems. All of this, everything you see on the table, weighs the same exact weight as the outstanding Grands Forest Brooks 19 inch small forest axe, 37 ounces, which is an amazing axe. I'm talking, it is excellent. Does everything an axe should do and more. However, these are systems. Exact weight. I'm sorry, the weights are exactly the same, Harkening back to my philosophy video. All made possible because the hulam is so lightweight. You couldn't do that if you rolled in, I don't know, SE hoodless. What is it, 34 ounces carry weight? Then, then, then I don't have headroom. I don't have weight headroom. I can't take that, can't take that. Now I'm going to say, okay, now I'm really looking at the chopping performance of this knife. Is it as good as an axe? Whatever. With a lightweight hoodlum, you do not have to do that. You don't make necessarily have to make those hard decisions. I think if you paired the, the buck hoodlum with a saw viver and maybe a small knife, and you don't even have to go with a Leatherman. I did that because now I have a driver capability to take the handle slabs off to make a spear. Talk about that here in a second. All kinds of other tools I've talked about. Might be a lightweight Swiss Army knife like the Victorinox Cadet. Might be an extremely lightweight 4-ounce Mora knife. There's a top cue. 
Absolutely. Now you have a system. Absolutely. Sorry, I would Once go with the system I'm showing you right here nice. because it's just so versatile and it's very energy saving, especially with a saw viper. And then with the splitting capability of this, the precision of this, to bust out a kindling, you know it. I got a cruise. There's so much to talk about. Also, it's a great draw knife. That's another thing I tested on the Hoodlum. Nice. That long blade, again, notice I'm wearing gloves, guys. I mean, wear gloves, especially you'll see me wearing the leather work gloves out there. I tested it on a dead tree, and it was amazing at its planking. That's what I'll call it. Shave off big old planks. Maybe use it in some type of bushcrafting task, fire making. That 10 inch blade is nice to have. Yeah. Just like Ron and I were talking in the SHOT Show vid, very nice to have. Talked about the handle slabs. You can take them off rather easily, just flat bladed driver needed. Your Swiss Army knife will have it, your Leatherman will have it. Once you do so, you can convert the hoodlum into a very effective wilderness spear. Of which, if you've been watching the Net and Fancy Project, you probably know I'm quite fond of. Mm-hmm. It's a way to dispatch very large game safely. And interestingly enough, Crockett 20 and myself had a very <laughs> funny discussion about that during the backpack trip. Maybe I'll show you on video. I don't know. Don't hold me to it. Um, you'd have to immobilize the game somehow. You, you wouldn't be running after it like a caveman. That only works in the cartoons. Um, the hoodlum, though, however, worked pretty good. I mean, I... We found a fallen tree from a snowstorm. No, we didn't cut anything down live. And I took that, uh, a large limb, delimbed it with the hoodlum, and then I strapped it to the end of it. I, however, did not split the tip of that sapling uh, and then wrap the handle around it, cord wrap it, because it was just so slimy with, with um, sap and stuff. I just did it on the exterior. And then I actually wrapped the exterior of it with a, sorry, duct tape. <laughs> because it was so sappy. After that, lashed it with 550 cord. I mean, really tight, as tight as I could get it. And then uh, we were quite impressed with how well it worked. And if I were to make it a permanent spear, in other words, in other words one I'm using day after day, I would have lashed it even more. And uh, it worked great. And just, uh, I don't recommend you throw those spears. They're more just get reach with your survival knife. Um, but just to test the coating of the blade, the balance, we were hucking it into the snow, snow bank. Be careful when you do that and when you carry that spear around, nice. always put the sheath on it. Otherwise, you just might slice your hand open like huge. That's philosophy of use as I see it. Uh, lots to discuss, as you can see. And it's, to me, very interesting moving on. Weight, balance, and feel. I already talked about the weight. It's extremely light for what it is. And when you look at the knife's weight, and actually when I go to competitive options, maybe you should consider what other knife weighing the same performs as good or better than the hoodlum and that's that's an absolute fair question especially for the price range I'll try to roll in some options for you you can make up your own mind and I'll tell you what I think about it too I pretty much already have the balance is fast in hand just like I said that could make it a fighting knife okay uh, it does have a ramp there which would with, uh, with uh, what I consider to be not good jumping nope this should make it sharper. Hey, Mike at Buck, make that sharper. Don't put jimping on it if it's just going to be a, you know, an exercise in looks, aesthetics. I don't, I'm not interested. But the reason I bring that up in that role, in the feel, and the quickness and speed role, is because we'll need some type of traction plan, a guard of some type. But it's not like a traditional, I don't know, buoy knife that has a double quillion. It doesn't. It's a survival knife. Could be pressed into a defensive role, no doubt. In hand, balance is excellent, and I really love the double, I'm kind of jumping ahead to handle, the double finger choils right here. Okay, because and this is pretty much how I ran the buck all the time. By the way, in batoning, Crockett 20 was noting that as he came back here, his pinky was smacking the hammer pommel right back here. Kind of like I did on the Ontario RD9. So I would probably experiment with it. And you'll probably do as I do and just, I don't know, choke up, and then you're not running out of real estate here. Um, just a small data point. Great balance, so you know. Can I do the finger balance? Uh, I don't know. I guess I can, more or less. It seems that it's going to tip a little bit forward because of the blade, blade design. Uh, I already talked about that. 5160 spring steel. Now, 5160 has kind of a mixed reputation with me personally because I've reviewed a couple knives with it, like the Ontario RD9, which kind of had some issues. I'm talking chipping out. Uh, I'm not making this up. I'm not doing it because uh, Ron has gone to the next realm. I'm just being very honest, uh, just like he'd want me to. 
and just like I always am. This 5160 steel from Buck is the best I've ever seen so far. Okay, we split a lot, we batoned with it a lot, and we hacked with this hoodlum a lot. You can tell just by looking at it, right? If you doubt me, ask Rocket 20. Didn't sharpen it. Haven't sharpened it at all, and I've never done this on a nothing fancy tabletop review. Check this. I wasn't sure I was seeing it right because I took my gloves off up there and I was like, Crockett, dude, that edge on that thing is amazing. And he was like, it is. I'm like, I don't see any chips. I don't see anything showing any type of wear on it. Wow. And you can see how sharp it is. I haven't even touched it up, guys. I'm not lying to you. And it came this way out of box. Uh, I will say the word amazing is probably appropriate. I'm not lying to you. The 5160 steel on this Buck Hoodlum is amazing. We always talk about Buck Heat heat Treat. Uh, I'm not sure what they did on the 5160 yeah, like formulation, where they got it from, and I don't care. All I know is that this is probably the best carbon steel performance I've seen in the project yet. I took it I'm against the wood hard. Dug in the snow with it. I didn't dig in the dirt with it. I generally won't do that. That's a little bit too much. Great steel, though. It is a carbon steel. It will rust on you. Be careful. You can see the powder coating on the blade will wear off. And you're probably going to lose the emblem as well. The knife itself, the handle scale is 100% made in the USA. You guys like USA made? Roger that. Here's a good option for you. No, the sheath is not made in the US, made in China. The knife itself, though, is, and there you have it. Very impressed with the performance of the steel. Very impressed. Make sure it doesn't rust out on you. Handle. Ron talked at shot about, what is it, the shock mitigation system? <laughs> Whatever, the SMS, because it has a hollowed out chamber. I'll roll in a picture there right now with the scales off. I think there are so many variabil uh, variables in the harmonics of batoning that I, I think it'd be really hard to say you will never ever get vibration in the hoodlum. I just don't. now. It sounds like they put it through a lot of testing, and I will say in our batoning, in our hacking, chopping, we didn't get any vibration whatsoever in the handle. I mean, none. Um, but again, that was against that one wood type. What we did, I'm not going to say you won't, but to me, the real win of that hollowed out handle is the weight and the balance. No, I wouldn't put any survival items back there. I think Ron talks about that too that you know they just get bounced around are they easily accessible uh, no um, by the way when you take those handle slabs off to make a spear screw those two screws together through the handle slab and stow it in the sheath or uh, the pocket of your sheath so you don't lose it so maybe it does maybe it doesn't mitigate shock but we had no vibration problems whatsoever in the hoodlum thumbs up man more importantly, that handle is well designed. Notice no sharp corners around the circumference of the hoodlum. Love that. I've criticized several blades for not having that. Anytime you get a squared profile, it's uncomfortable in hand, especially when you're doing big work like batoning, like chopping. You will find out real quick that that is an uncomfortable handle. They are somewhat proud, i.e. extending a little bit past the tang least on the top portion of the blade um, and that's the way Ron wanted it now you might complain about this sharp edge here I don't know this one right here you could sand that if that bugged you and again in my experience holding it like so I didn't see any issues at all love the handle material love the looks of it it's a handsome uh, handle material I'm talking the scales red spacers quality on it seems exceptional the fit and finish, excellent. The fasteners, excellent. This blade is about a month old in the possession of the Nut and Fancy project. Okay, maybe some earlier versions had quality issues. Uh, from what I'm seeing, those are all worked out. And if you do get a hoodlum that has it, send it back. Just like so many items I talk about here, they will take care of you. Interestingly, too, that micarta actually is a very high traction material when it's wet. Another reason why I tested the hoodlum in the well, snow. I, I actually cut out snow blocks with it. Well, at least attempted to cut out snow blocks. That big old 10-inch blade, I'll tell you, it Whatever will dig 
whether it's dirt or snow, it's got a lot of length that you can get in there and get some work done. Um, and one reason I was doing it, test the coating, test the steel, see how easily, or not easily, it would rust. It didn't. I wiped it off afterwards. And also the handle. So the handle it was wet, soaked, yeah. and I gave it to Croc Twin. I was like, hey, does this or does this not have high traction when it's wet? Yeah. Barehanded, we both checked it out. Sure enough, high traction. Just like I've seen from several other knives here in the project that also have my Carta scales. It is an excellent handle material. There's lots of great handle materials. I'm not saying it's the best. Great. That's the handle. That's the guard. Oh, by the way, the course of double finger grooves there act as a lower guard. Talked about the thumb ramp and the uh, <clears throat> not so great jimping. Sheath. I could probably make a whole video on the sheath. I know Ron at SHOT Show told us about it. Let me go over it really quick, as fast as I can. This is probably one of the best nylon sheaths I have seen in a large survival knife. Yep, I'm not kidding you. Um, also, I'm kind of nowadays preferring either a thermoplastic sheath or a well-designed nylon sheath like this for weight reasons over, I don't know, a Kydex sheath, which usually has you know steel or some type of rivet in it. Also fasteners, which are going to add to your loadout weight. This is a very lightweight sheath for what it can do. Has a thermoplastic liner in it with a big old opening in it. As uh, Ron said, kind of a funnel opening. Um, good, bad, it's actually very securely attached to the sheath, i.e. I think it's kind of sewn in there. The bad part of that is you will not be able to get rid of this easily. Everything can be done. It's a loose insert. Buck, I would like to see you tighten that insert up so it actually, without any fasteners, provides some press on the blade so this won't happen. Just like I've criticized the Ontario blades for, if someone in the heat of battle forgets to snap their knife, it comes falling out, they try to grab it, they just slice their fingers. Not super great. Um, the fastening, however, on the sheath is excellent. Double retention, as Ron talked about. There's a 550 cord that goes over. I never use that, nor will I ever. Maybe it's to really, really secure it if you're jumping out of a plane or something. I don't know. Your primary way of fastening it will be via metal thumb snap in a very high quality nylon strap like so. Listen to the quality. Oh, I love it. Little buck snap. That's some good nylon on there. I talk about nylon quality too because I think it shows overall quality of the sheath. Uh, retains well. Slight rattle. I don't have any issues with that. I mean, I just don't. Uh, again, the accessory sheath. You can put your knife, a tactical folder in there. Normally I don't put anything in there because I have a backpack. That's my organization system. If I'm going really light with just a blade, which I never do, I guess I could do that. On the lower part of the sheath, more accessory straps, you betcha. And they have like Ranger rubber bands type stuff down here. So you can actually tuck in another knife, maybe a fire steel, maybe your Mora knife which would actually be kind of cool and you're good to go because then you'd have all your blades you know centrally located tie down strap and by the way a huge lanyard hole in that too I got some hollowed out 550 for safety in there and then the attachment system on the the hulam sheath is excellent this is exactly how I prefer to carry it on my belt with this top portion thrown over and it by the way it discusses this in the very excellent directions that come with the hulam and then the molly strap wove through it, so this is where my belt goes. Okay, and again, this is showing you how it's done right there. Incidentally, it shows you can actually hammer with a hoodlum with a knife in the sheath. Ron made it a point to say, hey, uh, we never meant to show them hammering a stake. It should have been a nail or something small like a walnut. <laughs> I did not test the hammering function of the hoodlum. So sorry. Overall, the sheath is excellent. Uh, I don't really like strapping really big blades to my Molly gear. In fact, I never would do that. I shouldn't say never. Never say never, right? Uh, I don't do it, but if you were to do it with a hoodlum, the problem you probably have is opening this up all the way so you could weave that into your Molly system. You're probably going to have this flap just floating out in space. You're going to have to find a way to secure it. Okay, not a showstopper for me. Great nylon, great snaps. Yes, not made in the U.S., this particular sheath, but the rest is. Excellent job, Ron. Love the sheath on it. All right, moving on, talking points. It's going to be a long video. So much to discuss. Knife guys will love it. Competitive options. There's your buck hoodlum right there. we got to talk about value when we talk about competitive options, I guess, right? 
Uh, if you look around, get a really smoking price on the hoodlum, I think you'll get it for about 130. Yep, and you'll see an upright who had it for that price at that time. Uh, other knives that I've talked about also still very much love in the project. Again, where'd it go? The Ontario Artac 2. It's a heavier knife though. Maybe around 100, maybe 80 to 100, I would say, on the Artac 2, wearing the Chestnut Ridge Kydex holster on it. Okay, great knife. Chops better, splits just as good, every bit as capable. It's a better chopper because of the weight. Um, less expensive. Not if you add the sheath. If you add that sheath, you're talking more expensive with a crappy Ontario sheath. Um, how about this one? Here's one out of left field. Colt Steel Laredo Bowie riding in a custom Kydex. No, I can't tell you where I got the Kydex. They told me not to because I can't get overwhelmed with orders. They're already maxed out. Sorry! This one's Duracoated by me. This Laredo Bowie and SK5. I showed you guys this. Look how sick. I'll tell you this. I haven't worked it over. This would be a great chopper, great survival knife. Every bit as capable as the Hoodlum. You know, steel wise, that's debatable. You know, is SK5 as good as that 5160? Uh, probably not. For that matter, same for the Artac 2. Again, that 5160 is the best carbon steel performance I have seen in the Nut and Fancy project to date, hands down, to include the outstanding Cold Steel Trailmaster. Great knife, great steel, um, not impervious to breakage. And what is the way, what does it weigh? Cold Steel Trailmaster, 25 ounces, two ounces more, running around a buck ten, 110 bucks. Great knife, big old blade, quarter inch thick, good chopper, great hacker. These are some other options, a lot of ways just as good. Craton handle, which by the way is actually slippery when wet. Uh huh. At least in my experience. Other options to the hoodlum. Um, all of them, not all of them, but pretty much most of them are heavier than Ron's knife. And again, that weight gives you some other options, and very few of them have a blade as long as the hoodlum. That is a lot of spanning capability that you're able to do some serious wood splitting with. Two kinds of cool. It's a legacy knife. We have lost Ron Hood. And that is sad. I think, however, that the Buck Hoodlum by our friends at Buck Knife is near perfectly executed, dare I say. Fix that jimping, tighten that sheath insert, and that's about the only improvement I could see to make on the hoodlum. By the way, this 550 core gets in your way. Ace it. Just cut it, replace it later if you want it. Easy enough. Those are about the only two misses on the hoodlum. Don't expect superior chopping performance from this lightweight knife. It just won't happen. I don't care what your technique is. Um, you're going to get outstanding batoning performance with it, especially if you keep that blade lubricated with an oil like WD-40, which I've shown for the last three years, it will do well. And by the way, the bigger the log, the bigger your baton should be. Thump on that thing. Look at the, my videos. When we're going through that three foot log, I'm not using a foot long baton. I'm using like a three foot log to send that 5160 steel where it needs to go. Forgot to talk about that. Bone marrow notch. Apparently, Ronnie loved the bone marrow, and he would use that notch, proven over the last 15 years or so in his own wilderness expeditions, to access the bone marrow, throw it in his soups, do that. You just like score the bone marrow, whack it with the blade, crack it open, voila, instant bone marrow. It is not a saw. It is, however, a good way to grab, I don't know, a baling wire or something off your cookware, which Ronnie did when he cooked his coffee. You could bend wire with it, too. Um, I don't think, by the way, that that weakens the blade at all. Buck did a 12,000 pound test times 10 on the 5160 steel and they didn't break the blade. I don't think you're going to break it. Old Chevy spring steel ain't going to break it. Um, so I don't have issues with guys, oh, I don't like the notch. I don't know if it's going to be a strong knife. I wouldn't worry about it. We thumped it pretty hard up there. The only thing we didn't have in that test is really cold temperatures. That's when you really test a blade. Zero degrees Fahrenheit or colder. You will find out real quick if your blade's going to take it. Um, two kinds of cool. It is a legacy blade from Ron. Encapsulating again his own preferences. What he learned in his own wilderness adventures. And like I said, as you can probably glean by now, he and I saw eye to eye on lots of stuff. Um, great knife. Uh, the price for what you're going to pay if you get it around 130 absolutely worth it. 
Absolutely, hands down. Uh, if you can live with the limitations I've identified in this nut and fancy tabletop review, I think you'll be very happy with the Hoodlum. It is one of the lightest weight, large, very capable survival knives you will ever put in your kit. Um, good job, Ron. Good job, Buck. Thank you so much. This is a nut and fancy review. By the way, since this video went kind of long, I might break out into its own video, my testing of the Buck Hoodlum. I'll have to see what the video length is. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your support. May you rest in peace, Ron, and I wish his family all the best, best directly from the Nut and Fancy Project with all humility, Nut and Fancy.